Hello everyone, welcome to this new episode of our channel. Today we have a very special guest, Kire. Hello. So, <laughs> welcome. So um, it's not going to be just myself in the channel anymore, but I have uh, more and more inspiring guests. Today we talk about data science. And in fact, who are you and what do you do? Yes, so hi and uh, thanks, thanks for having me here today. Um, I'm a data scientist, my name is Kire Haiba, I'm a data scientist for the past 12 years, even before data science was like a known terminology. <laughs> um, lately I work in uh, marketing in the past uh, six years, so basically I'm focusing on data science in marketing, uh, working with uh, text analysis and uh, data mining for discovering latest uh, brand messaging and advertising uh, trends mm -hmm. and uh, doing some prediction around that area to see like what's the next best thing or next best message to throw away, uh, mm -hmm. throw out there cool. in the message. That's yeah. pretty cool. So, uh, what are the most interesting applications of AI that you, that you see today? Yes, the most in interesting applications are like, for example, the ones I'm working at uh, mm -hmm. now, not because of their mind, but they're also f um, quite interesting. It's like, um, uh, what is the next uh, trending thing? So we're trying to discover on what is the next trending thing uh, in the market or in the area of, uh, of marketing mm -hmm. in order to optimize like um, um, ad advertising spend, to know what kind of uh, next marketing campaigns mm -hmm. to uh, develop, and just to know like what's the messaging going on further. Yeah. So, so your your um, main area is marketing, the where the where, where you are focusing right now. At the moment, yes, okay. yes, 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 yes. Also, some other fun uh, fun things uh, that I've seen uh, developing uh, at the moment is um, uh, uh, PDF scanning, for example, for text analysis, where. Um, it's used mainly in the banks mm -hmm. uh, in Germany to match uh, the um, uh, given advertising of the bank with the client's data okay. in order to find the best interesting uh, next offer for the clients. This is done by like third party companies so not connected with the banks that is trying to be like sure. kind of mediator between the banks and the clients. That's a very interesting thing. Also, uh, I have worked with data scientists uh, that are uh, developing like uh, next best action for web uh, for web mm -hmm. advertising. So, uh, something that we see already in Amazon, for example, mm -hmm. is like what's going to be the next behavior of the web user and where are they going to click so like they can use like then okay. this data so for be, promotion. So, like behavior analytics and this yes. kind of things. Yes. So, yes. Well, if I ask you, what is the biggest opportunity that you see? I mean, what is that uh, is not out there yet, but if it's there, it's going to be a big thing. I think like uh, customization is a big thing coming mm -hmm. coming up next. Um, all the big companies are trying to work around customization, like Google, Facebook, uh, Amazon. Yeah. Um, um, the data is there. It's up to us, to the data scientists yeah. and the industries to harvest it and to, yeah. to make sure to customize it. I think that's a big thing. And also bringing uh, the opportunities or the data closer to the customer. Yeah. So uh, we have a lot of data. C customer, you mean uh, the company or the final The end account. user. The end the user. The end user, okay. exactly. So it can be like if it's business to business a company or if it's like business to client the client. Uh, but bringing the uh, 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 data or the offer closer to him, so how how this will be applicable to their sure. service or how they will how it will improve their life? Yeah, I, I think I think it's a very interesting topic, and for me, you know, I'm Italian, so I grew up with this myth of the artisan that creates tailor-made processes. Yes. Then we have moved to. Uh, standardization, uh, global uh, globalization, let's say. Yes. And uh, now we want to have uh, personalized globalization. Now, so we uh, can offer personalization at scale. Yes. I guess that's uh, the goal of uh, big data applied to marketing, right? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Great. So right now, I mean, we've heard, um, we've discussed these uh, things about personalization and these technologies. AI related and yes. uh, applied to marketing. What is holding us back from uh, from really making the best use of them? Yes, so that's interesting question. It's always like uh, going uh, on and off. 
I think the human factor is still a main decisive uh, factor mm -hmm. that is holding us as a humans back um, back for uh, mm. for better involvement. Let's put it like that. Human factor, I would say, like more like. Um, a lack of understanding or lack of interest to understand something. Also, fear is a big uh, factor there because uh, lots of people are afraid of change, afraid of yeah. new stuff. But also uh, something that is like that I'm very sad to say is like also the personal factor in many companies, especially when you have like a uh, brand new talents and growing like masterminds. Um, there are mm -hmm. people who have like personal um, um, how do you call it, like fear of being a put in shadow mm -hmm. so that's like maybe like yeah. higher management or like yeah. uh, or like uh, higher level positions that are pushing down all these growing talents and, and you you think it's uh, an educational uh, problem I think it's like um, educational problem exactly but it's also it can be like a personal motivational problem right okay. if you if you are like let's say you reach a pers uh, like point in your career where you don't want to yeah. grow and you don't want to like contribute to yeah. the um, society or like uh, kind of in a stagnation phase yeah I also see it myself a lot when um, when we deliver our uh, technology to mm. our clients uh, very uh, often some people there they feel that our technology is going to replace them yes no? which ultimately is not going to be uh, happening if they change the way they work no so uh, instead of doing what the technology can do well already humans like us we should yes. focus on the extra mile on the very last part on the maybe extreme customization personalization interpretation of the data I that's agree. very difficult no? yeah uh, yeah it's a common fear and i have been working in the silicon valley for long years and that was like the hot topic there that the robots will uh yeah. will remove the humans it's like um it's very interesting that like if, i mean this is like problem that has been going in the past years even before the computers came uh, when you create something uh, greater let's say you have created an artificial intelligence mm -hmm. program that is removing sort of a human workspace new uh, work is being created that is uh, and that needs human to fill in sure so it's like an evolution of the of the workspace that uh, I think at this point we cannot foresee how it's gonna go but um, I think, realistically speaking, uh, robots or a artificial intelligence in a foreseen time, time they cannot uh, remove all the humans no. from work. We still need like human validation and human interpretation of the things how they're working. I totally agree. And you have a good example. Uh, if you talk to uh, Google Assistant, to Alexa, to Siri, yes. they're not that smart yet, right? No. Yes, okay. exactly. So, uh, but if you think about what you're currently doing, uh, what is one very big challenge that you have and uh, maybe something that you really see it's very hard to overcome? Yes. So, as you said, like uh, Google Assistant and, or, the, or Alexa, for example, they are all trained to talk on the most common languages. Mm -hmm. Let's say English, uh, Chinese, Japanese, let's, uh, from the Asian languages. But all these like um, uh, small countries that are in the emerging markets sure. are kind of put on site yet. And that's my biggest challenge at the moment. Um, I'm working uh, on the algorithms for, uh, for, as I said, like marketing analytics. And uh, we're working a lot we are with emerging markets. So let's say like small European countries or Italian countries. More, most likely you guys are already familiar with this problematic as well. These markets um, or these countries, they started with their digitalization process a little bit later or they're still starting. So it's still a big challenge to start working with these languages. So I think that's um, at the moment my personal biggest challenge, uh, digitalization of the, of the emerging markets. Yeah, I get that. Um, I mean, I know you are very much into text analysis. Yeah. And I mean, it's a domain where we also uh, operate now. So mm -hmm. uh, I recognize that uh, a challenge that we uh, that is out there is related to um, those countries that maybe are are in very important countries, also from a, a business and value perspective, but they speak a language that is uh, hardly spoken outside of the country. Yes. We get the best example that we have in Europe, I guess, it's the Nordics, now Finnish, yes. Swedish, Norwegian. 
I mean, developing um, uh, uh, text analysis capabilities for these countries, it's very expensive because yeah. they, those are as complicated as other languages, but they don't have uh, the impact that you have if you develop support for Spanish, for example. Yes. Uh, but do you see statistical models instead applying to these um, uh, to these languages instead of uh, real based, for example? Because maybe yes. now if we follow mathematical models, that's going to be easier. Yes, um, there are uh, already existing mm -hmm. uh, some statistical mo models, especially for the Kyrillic languages. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's like, I would say, like, thanks to the Russian uh, data scientists because uh, Russian is a Kyrillic language. So then they, once they develop uh, statistical models on Russian, yeah. then it's like easily applicable for the rest of the mm -hmm. Kyrillic languages. Um, and um, slowly, slowly, I see that lots of like independent data yeah. scientists uh, that are also like, let's say, from Scandinavia or from like uh, uh, other smaller countries yeah. that develop their own stuff. Yeah, and then uh, with the yeah they do it, they do it in in house internally exactly. right exactly. yeah I they guess. do it internally yeah. and then um, I think it's like also interesting thing uh, like going back to the question like uh, what's the next big thing big best thing is like the good collaboration between the data scientists mm -hmm. now I see more and more over the years the data scientists are more interested in collaboration collaboration. Mm -hmm. So then um, all these small models are e more easily accessible mm -hmm. and then you can put them uh, together into one big okay. team. Okay, so it's like a sort of open, it's not open source, but uh, it's a collaborative, yes. uh, decentralized. Now, exactly. uh, now we have to exactly. say decentralized, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. uh, I have one last question for you. If you um, could have the chance to stand in front of CIOs or maybe uh, CX managers or some decision makers, yeah. is there a piece of advice that you would give them? Absolutely. I would say uh, be more open for innovation and be more open for uh, young and new talents. Um, mm -hmm. many, many times uh, there is a clash between the old ways and the new ways, uh, but uh, I will always say like uh, be ready to explore new things and uh, be open for innovation. Mm -hmm. um, every year the new new crowd is coming in the market, let's put it like that, yeah. or new talents are coming out there. So then give uh, space a little bit for them, guide them how to do it, but also learn from them like what's next thing and what's good to, good to have yeah. in the house. Um, I, uh, I totally agree. And the, um, the, the thing is that if you try new things and you do it fast and in a lean way, the worst thing that can happen is that you waste two or three months. Exactly. But you don't need big investments, you don't need big teams, everything is out there. Most of things come for free or are even collaborative. Yes. So just give it a try. Maybe you uh, find the best new way for uh, the future of your company, true. right? No, that's true. So, uh, guys, thanks again for, uh, for watching this uh, episode of our YouTube channel. Uh, thanks again, uh, Kire, for being here My and pleasure. for sharing your uh, point of view. Thank you. Uh, let us know in the comments if you like this kind of interviews, uh, if you like the topics that we talk about, if you have any questions for me or Kire, type it in the comments. And Usually when I finish the videos, I say, see you soon. <laughs> so we do it. See One, you soon. two, three. See you see soon. You soon. <laughs> Ciao.